Hello, Josh. Welcome to Sunday Sessions, mate. How are you? You all right? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Sunday Sessions again. It's Sunday, you're hungover. I'm about to make you something delicious. Today we're making a beef rendang. Um, yeah, man, easy one, but I've done a few things to get ahead. So here, we've made the all important paste, right? Yeah, and this is, I've written it down somewhere, 14 red chilies, 14 shallots, 14 cloves of garlic, a thumb-sized piece of ginger, and a thumb-sized piece of galangal. Yeah, if you can't get ginger, double the garlic up. But basically, I blitzed it in the food processor. Um, you can do it in a pestle and mortar, up to you. But let's talk about what we're gonna cook. So, right, so we've got 800 grams of beef brisket. This is aged. Um, got it from a really nice butcher. Traditionally, right, rendang and other curries, we don't brown our meat. However, I was taught to cook in restaurants and like I compare curries to ragus. It's my, my number one base is a ragu. So for me, not browning meat feels weird. So I'm gonna brown my meat. I've got my pan on. I'm gonna season the beef. Just like that. Liberal, this is our first bit of salt going in, right? And then, I've got a little bit of oil. I'm just gonna go in this pan. And we're gonna stick our beef in. Hello, Huss. How are you? Good. Right, look, so beef's in. And the idea of sealing is that we're caramelizing the outer layers of our beef, right? Otherwise, we're not really bringing the flavor out. So the salt and the oil is gonna allow the beef to go crispy and caramelized, touch the bottom of the pan. And again, it's about building flavor, right? We want a nice brown on this. All right, so Sunday sessions today has been filmed in front of a live audience. Show them the audience. Well, my dad's on one knee, bro. <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. But yeah, this is what happens, man. When browning, right, you don't want to stir around too much. You want to each side, bing, 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 and brown each side. If you keep stirring it, it doesn't give it the ability to like catch and colour. Um, so yeah, just let it do its thing, high heat. Don't burn the bottom of the pan, I'll show you why after. Thank you. It's nowhere near ready, bro. No, it's not like that, it's not steak. Yeah. Big George. I'm getting, I'm getting my close up, bro. My close up, you get me? Mm. No, what do you mean, bro? This is this is this is my thing, bro. What go on, George? Oh. Move, man. You look like Gannets, bro. Here, here. All right, move, move, move. Disperse. How they move? Oh. All right, so look. Our meat's brown, and you can see here in the bottom of the pan, we've got all of these like sticky, juicy bits. We're going to add our paste, right? Our paste contains moisture and we're going to deglaze the pan with our paste. We want to cook the paste out for like five minutes. We're not trying to get colour on it. No, we're not trying to burn it. We are trying to get colour on it. We want everything to go sweet and delicious. So we've got garlic in there that's going to go sweet. We've got ginger that's going to go sweet. We've got chilies in there that's gonna be fucking like hot and fiery. 
And we just want to make sure that we're frying this beautiful beef in loads of like aromatic, delicious shit, right? So rendangs traditionally are a, they're like a dry curry. So you add coconut milk, you bring it all the way down and it splits and like, although it's dry, it's still got a coating, but it's not like a wet on top of rice kind of vibe. Um, I really like them, man. They're hot, spicy, served with delicious things. So basically, I want all of the, the liquid in the pan from the vegetables to evaporate. Once this goes back to like dry frying, we can then move on to adding our next things, right? So I'll just keep it going, let it do its thing. We're using brisket, right? Brisket is a tough cut of meat. It's a part of the animal that's used a lot, so it's gonna have to cook for a long time. If you wanted to do this so it was quicker, instead of cooking for four hours, it cooked for two hours or like an hour and a half, use chuck steak, use diced pork shoulder, use something that's used less and less tough, basically. Um, I like the brisket, one, because the brisket that I've got is aged, so there's like a, a deeper flavor. I also like the fat content on brisket, so it's like fat, meat, fat, and that's all gonna render out and sit in our sauce and make the sauce split at the end. Right, look, let's look in this pan. It's cold out, so everything looks drastically hotter. Um, the moisture's going, the moisture's gone. Look, you see how we're starting to catch? We've got all of these like sticky bits on the bottom, right? So this is showing us that we've gone from stewing to frying, right? So we need to start thinking about making sure that none of this shit catches. We spent all of that time doing our thing, making it delicious, and to fuck it now, to get any color on it to make it catch, will be long. Basically, our paste has got to a point where it's at optimum temperature for it sugar, to release its sugars. It's food science, isn't it? Food science is boring. If you do it for a job, I don't know what you're doing, but food science is boring. But what I do know is like when sugars come out. When sugars come out, it gives us the ability to catch to the bottom of the pan, right? So to prevent that, we need to be diligent and be watching and know when it's going to happen. So, from here now, I've got two handfuls of shredded coconut. I buy this stuff frozen. I've got a local Sri Lankan shop. I say it's not even a Sri Lankan, it's just a shop run by Sri Lankans who do Sri Lankan things. And this is one of the things they have in their freezer. Two handfuls of like desiccated coconut, not the dry stuff. Don't put the dry stuff in here. This is gonna coat all of our beef, pick up any shit on the bottom of the pan and give us like that extra bit of texture when it's all cooked out. From here, I'm gonna add in my aromats. I've got three sticks of lemongrass. I've taken the tops off, I've bashed them with a knife. In. I've got one cinnamon bark. In. Here, five cardamom pods, three star anise, six or seven cloves, in, yeah? Aromats, delicious thing, mm, yum, yeah? Now, I can't cook this any longer, I can't. So, I'm gonna add a wet thing in. I've got kefir lime leaves, there's like 10 lime leaves here. This is gonna give us like a sherbet -y, almost, almost like sweet but citrus flavor. In they go. And then to stop the frying process, two tins of coconut milk. Now, when the coconut milk goes in, I'm gonna scrape the bottom of my pan. I'm gonna get all that flavor off the bottom, right? See the bottom of my pan? If you rewind the video, you see that all that sticky stuff was on the bottom. Moisture goes in, we wanna scrape our pan, we don't wanna lose any flavor, right?
put two tins of coconut milk in, we're gonna put one tin's worth of water, yeah? Now, this is gonna sit on a medium low heat with a lid on. Three hours it took me yesterday. Three entire hours. And I know that seems like a long thing. Do this in the morning, let it run, you're good. So, we're using a lid, right? Because we want to cook the meat without reducing the sauce, yeah? And I know this is a dry curry, but if we were to cook this without the lid on, we'd evaporate our sauce too quickly and our beef would be undercooked. So, lid on. When the beef starts to tender, lid off, high heat, reduce. We'll get there, don't worry. Here's some beautiful shots of other stuff. Spain, beautiful shots of raw. Here, here's, some, here's, some, uh, here's some unedited bits from Spain. <laughs> now you've got a bigger job to do. <laughs> All right, so rendang's on the stove. Um, I'm just going to show you a little, little fritter that I like. Um, we're serving the rendang with rice and a couple of cucumbers. But I just thought we'd do something a little different. Um, lime leaves, one, two, three, four, five, right? Stack them on top of each other, like so. Roll them, like that, back on themselves. And we're just going to what they'd call in the kitchen world is a chiffonade, which is sliced thinly, right? In here, I have an entire tin of sweet corn. Green giant in particular, the sweet kind. I love sweet corn. Um, it's one of my favorite fucking things, I'm not gonna lie, I do love sweet corn. Lime leaves into our sweet corn, yeah? Now, I'm not opposed to using store-bought pastes. Um, I've already shown you how to make a paste for a render. I ain't got time to show you. One day we'll cover Thai red curry paste and green, right? But for now, we're just gonna use a nice store-bought one. We're gonna do two big tablespoons, yeah? Like that. And then we want a pinch of salt. We're gonna stir this through. Now, we're gonna add enough corn flour to coat, yeah? Little coating of corn flour. We're gonna loosen this with water, but corn flour is the only binding agent we're putting in. So the corn flour, you want it to, to make everything hold onto each other. It's clinging, right? And any bits of corn flour in between sweet corn is gonna let the oil in and it's gonna go crispy. Now, I don't want this fully packed of corn flour because it'll be too dense. So I'm just gonna loosen it, touch of ice cold water, right? We're looking for like a batter consistency. And then, I'm gonna take one of these and spoon it into our oil. Always drop one first, that's our little test run, see if it holds. If it's not right, we can add more corn flour, we can add more water. The first one is always gonna be shit, no matter what. It's like when you have first time sex, you know? A little bit shit, but now, new and improved, yeah, cuz. And all we're looking for is crispy batter. Cooked sweet corn. Corn fritter. Bit of salt on the top while it's still hot. 
Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Got like all the tones of like red curry paste, crispy batter, sweet sweet corn, lime gives you the acidity. Yum. The other day, and there was decks outside, bro. And I was like, Yeah, it's a part of the community, but fuck me, them man take the piss, bro. Obviously, there's a swap in, and this is what our ring down now looks like. See how there's like a bit of oil, it's cooked all the way down, it's split. It's a dry curry, right? This has taken three and a half hours, I think I cooked it for yesterday. Yesterday, she's gonna bang our ring down. Onto a plate. Now, bear in mind, remember that there's bits of lemongrass in here, there's star anise, there's cloves, so anything that you can see, do pull out. Cucumber gives you like that cooling element. It is a hot curry. So to have a little emergency cucumber on your side helps. I say it's a hot curry. Cutting the chili for garnish. Little sprinkling of chili on the top. Got some coriander. And I just wanna go a nice squash. Juice. Little other side of the lime on for good measure. And that, ladies and gentlemen, beef rendang. And then I've just got these little corn fritters and we plonk on the other side. So now we've got texture, we've got meat, we've got cooling cucumber, crispy fiery, cooling, and also some beautifully microwave basmati rice. Curry for two, blood. Yum, but it's fucking yum, bruv. Cab? The rendang's weird, it's like a slow braised wagyu, but where we added the coconut, 
there's like a texture when you chew down on it. The meat's completely soft. There's like a little fattiness that coats it all. And then just like, fucking rice is king, bro. Do you know what I mean? Even if it's microwave rice. Delicious. I like the cucumber. Rendang's super powerful. Like, it's coconut heavy. Some bites have got star anise. Some bites is like floral cardamom, meaty, coconutty. And then just to plonk a bit of cucumber in your mouth and completely refresh your palate and start again and get a new flavour and a new this. Yeah, it's banging, bruv. And obviously, who don't like fritters? And again, like, there's lime leaf in the fritter, there's lime leaf in the rendang. It's flavours that accompany each other and complement each other. It's just a solid plate of food. Potato, beef rendang, corn fritters, secret cucumber, microwave rice, winter classic. Honestly, there's not much work that goes into this. The, big, the, the, the hardest thing you've got to do is fucking make a curry paste. The rest of it is just sitting on the stove making sure it doesn't burn. Now, four hours later, cardamom. Four hours later, you've got a delicious curry that you could eat with roti, you could eat with bread, you could eat with rice, you could eat with potatoes, you could turn it into a cheese toaster, you could do whatever the fuck you want with it. But it's a very, very, very good one. And you should all give it a go because I feel like rendang is something that we've all eaten before. And to know that you can make it this good at home means you can go out and explore other things. Thank you so much. Um, you never know, if there's some leftover rendang, I might do like a rendang fried rice video, which could be quite cool. But yeah, ideas, isn't it? Thank you very much. I have a Dutchie. Bon bon large. Thank you. is fantastic I can't wait to finish the program and I, I, I can eat it off that's why I can tell you this is a fantastic food I didn't realize you can cook like this you know that oh, all Indian is this is Indian yeah Malaysian Malaysia mm. very good food thank you thank you very much thank you. finish it off okay Can you say films? Film. Films. Films.